Canvases are hard to see And that is just fine with me Modus ponens is the plan Serve you logic I am D Converted man here And today I'm gonna look at this video It's an old video But it's a video worth doing Because It's a common argument It's a bad argument wrong in every possible conceivable way that an argument could be wrong and it's called the argument from reason yet it uses no reason at all <laughs> why the Brooklyn Bridge is good for two things getting people from one side to the other and giving pigeons a place to perch and rest their tired little wings People can feel safe crossing this bridge because it was designed to support lots of traffic going back and forth every day. But what if it hadn't been designed with human beings and their vehicles in mind? What if the Brooklyn Bridge had been constructed as a big perch for pigeons, perhaps to keep them off the buildings of Manhattan? In that case, wouldn't it be utterly foolish to drive your car across it? Does it make sense to trust something with a task that goes vastly beyond what it was meant to do? This is the basic idea behind the argument from reason, which is mainly an argument against naturalism. Naturalism is the claim that the natural world is all that exists. No God, no angels, no demons, just matter, energy, and natural forces. Many atheists are naturalists. But the argument from reason can also be used to support belief in God. So, here goes. Human beings have the ability to reason. We're using it right now. We wouldn't have discussions like this if we thought that our cognitive faculties, the processes that produce our beliefs, were unreliable. But naturalists have a problem here because they can only explain things by appealing to natural objects, natural events, natural causes. Think about this for a moment. You have beliefs. Ultimately, according to naturalism, your beliefs must be the result of physical processes in your brain. Now, what's going on in here? Particles in motion, chemical reactions, neurons firing, it's all physical, governed by laws of nature, not by commitment to truth. So it really seems like careful reasoning to you is actually straightforward, mechanical, mindless cause and effect. A fancy array of falling dominoes. That's a lot to respond to, but let me point out the logical fallacies. Argument to and from analogy, appeal to consequence, appeal to personal incredulity, appeal to ignorance, and that's it, really. That's his argument in a nutshell. Now, I've heard this argument presented in different ways and in slightly different formats. Some do it better than others, but ultimately it boils down to, well, you just can't trust your brain if all it is is chemicals, blah, blah, because reasons. But all it is is just chemicals. That is the fact. And it happens to be that we can't always trust our brain, but the majority of the time we can. And yes, it is good at truth seeking, because if it wasn't good at that, we would be dead. Our ancestors would not have made it out of Africa. They would have died. If you see a tiger running toward you and think, eh, that's a nice, fluffy, white cloud coming in. You're dead, because the tiger's going to eat you. Now, maybe you had kids before the tiger ate you, so we got some stupid kids, which might explain this video. The video's over here. I I'm talking to you. That it Don't worry about it. But nonetheless, no, no. Your analogy for the bridge doesn't work. For a number of reasons, if we constructed a structure for X purpose, and we all knew it was for X purpose, then no one would try to use it for any other purpose. Well, not no one, because people can do weird things. I, I watch videos sometimes of people climbing on top of the cranes and, like, hanging from them because people are just, I don't know, they want to show off, I guess. It's a thrill. It's crazy. I wouldn't do it, but okay. It's also illegal. But, but at any rate, you are intended to use things for purposes. Here's the problem, though, with the spiritual idea. 
Now, he mentioned angels and demons and uh, God. So I'll, I'll, I'll throw those into the mix in a moment. But let's just say that I have a thing that's more than my brain, more than the sensory inputs, that this thing is out here somewhere. I, I don't know where, but it's out there. And it talks to my brain, and then my brain talks to my body, and then I do stuff. If my brain is damaged, then this thing can't communicate very well to the brain. But the brain somehow receives some of it and still does things, I guess. But at some point, the brain just becomes useless and for whatever reason. And somehow, even though this thing has been completely separate, it now becomes me. Or actually, it was me the whole time, which is weird because I can't access memories and ideas and all this uh, from a brain that's been damaged, even though the, this thing is holding all that because it has to talk to this or what? I don't know. How, how do I know that the connection is not broken? Let's just say that my brain is fine. But what if that spiritual thing is broken? What if there's something interfering with it? How would you know? If you're able to continue to operate even once your brain has been damaged in some way, shape, or form, even though the soul, spirit thingy can't really communicate as effectively, then what's the difference between that and a soul being damaged in some way, shape, or form, or the connection between that soul and my brain being damaged? How would I ever know the difference? In fact, you couldn't know the difference. So how does positing a soul or spirit remove the problem of not being able to trust my sensory inputs, which I know can fail? Because we absolutely know that sensory inputs can fail. Some people are born without them. Others have them, but they, can't, they decay over time. Uh, different brains are, are made in different ways within the biological process of when you're born so you're literally born with a different brain some people are uh wind up with brains in essence in the wrong body because they should have been born into a male body but you know the sequence didn't get flipped so they were born as female but every single chemical in their brain says nope you should be male and now they need to do something to to help them to cope with this uh, mismatched system. All the different issues that we can possibly have with our brain uh, and the personality changes that people have uh, seen and experienced either themselves or secondhand or read or whatever, that spells out to me a very naturalistic process. Whether we like it or not or understand it, this guy doesn't understand it. It's just chemicals and electric. Yeah, it is, but so what? That doesn't change anything, okay? It doesn't change that we still have a consciousness. Oh, well, we don't understand what that is. So that consciousness is the soul, which then ties it again back to the physical, and again, the spiritual has to, at some point, interact in a physical way with a physical brain. How, how could something not physical mess with something physical? Well, we don't really have an answer to that because nobody understands how souls or spirits work because they're made up. They're not really real. We sh people just posit them as, well, maybe I'm really this out here and I'm not this in here. No, you're this. That's it. You are your brain. And I'm fine with that. I can detect truth just as well, if not better than others. And maybe less so than still others. And the reason that we have the scientific process is to try to have a better system of detecting things and understanding them. So, all of your logical fallacies 
fail. We are just chemicals. It may or may not be deterministic as far as dominoes falling, but it might be. We might not have free will. I don't know. Or we might have limited free will. Uh, I think it's apparent that we are constrained to certain things. There are things we cannot do no matter how much we, we might want to do them. You know, I can't start flying into the sky without some sort of apparatus that will enable me to do so. My body is not constructed for flight, no matter how much I might want to. So already I have a limit on my free will. And also f flight or flight, if something scares me, ah! I didn't have control over saying, ah, or if I stub my toe and Arr! You know, get mad and hurt. And I don't have any control over that stuff. So, yeah, you know, I, I just don't see how positing a supernatural anything could help. Actually, I think it complicates matters. Because now uh, you, you also have the problem that... Um, that there that there could be a breakdown in the connection from that soul to me. The soul could be injured or harmed in some way. Remember, there's angels and demons, so why can't the angels just be manipulating my soul? Or the demon be manipulating my soul without having to mess with my physical body at all? They just go wherever my soul's located. In fact, wouldn't that be where they live? How do I know? Well, how do I know that I'm not, in fact, a demon or an angel or God? How, what, what if I don't, what if I am and just don't know because I, I uh, had my memory erased? I wanted to know what it was like to be immortal. So I stepped into a mortal coil. I, there'd be no way to know. I still can't trust my soul self. More so if there's, uh, agents that can manipulate reality. If an angel comes and uh, says, you know, well, God wants you to do whatever, maybe there's no God. Maybe there's just angels. And maybe they're not really good, although they're always posited as, as good. But nonetheless, you're like, oh, okay. And you do that. And the angel's like, stupid, you know. Or a demon, same thing, you know, tricks you into doing something, making you think that you're serving your God and you're not. How would you know? Oh, well, the this or that holy manual instructs us how to beware. But it really doesn't. It really doesn't. If, if you can lie as a human, then why should I think that these spiritual things can't lie? Well, God can't lie. Why? Why can't God? Well, God says it's not a liar. That looks like it's a liar to me. There's a lot of promises God made and didn't keep in the Bible. Well, maybe you're going off of a different holy book, or maybe you've interpreted it in a special way that makes it so that God's not a liar. I don't know. But nonetheless, I can't trust that. You could still be manipulated to not see the truth. We are natural. If there's a soul or spirit, it would be natural. Otherwise, it could not affect our brain at all. It, there, there would be no way. At some point, it has to do something natural to affect the brain because the brain is natural. So if there was some other dimension uh, that we're right now calling spiritual, once we understood it, it would be called natural. So there's no need for this label. It's just the unknown right now. Okay? But there'd be a trace of it. There'd be evidence of it, not just arguments that are bad for it. This one's logically incoherent. But there'd be actual traceable evidence of it. There'd be some signal that we could detect and measure and maybe even learn how to read so that we would get a direct link to my soul so that I don't have to rely on on the brain in my body alone. I could have a computer saying, yeah, your soul just told your arm to move around. I'm like, oh, wow. Ho -ho. Go soul. Do that some more. Woo. Why are you doing that? Stop hitting me, soul! Ah! Why? Why? I'm having a fight with my soul. Why not? So, yeah, it... No, it doesn't work. Uh, how many logical fallacies was that? I don't know. Also, I've gone on way too long. Bleep.
We do not have a logically coherent argument, and unless and until we do, we must continue to be skeptical of the conclusions. Thanks for my pleasing Patreon people, who are... Where's the thing? Open the thing, you idiot. Have it on my screen. Okay, there we go. Let's pretend that never happened. <clears throat> As always, thanks to my pleasant Patreon people, Joseph Smith, Hector Defendi, uh, Jacob Santos, Luis Castro, and Godless Skeezer. Thank you for giving me money. Please continue to do so. And hey, you! Yeah, you! Why aren't you giving me money? You don't like me? You don't have it to spare? Like one dollar a month? One dollar could change my life forever. Because, like, if I bought a lotto ticket and then I won, that would be awesome. And, like, if you're a Patreon and I win the lotto with your money, then you're totally getting some of that money. How much? I don't know. Depends how much I win, I guess. And if you're not my Patreon, then no way are you getting that amount of money. It's getting dark in here. What's going on? Oh, this is the part where I fade out. Oh! That thought went nowhere. Well, well.